All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Mexicans Aboard, where, you know, we go over how Mexicans did over there in Europe. Um, if you guys want to stay tuned for this, I'll be trying to be doing these every single Tuesday and Monday. Uh, if you guys are interested in it, uh, you know, subscribe. Um, and if you guys aren't convinced yet, you know, just wait until the end of the video to, you know, make your decision. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it for the intro, so let's go right into this one. So I'm going to start in Belgium where Gerardo Artiega has officially um, become the Belgium Cup champion with El, El Gink. El Gink, I don't know, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know how to say the name. But yes, uh, he has become a Belgium Cup champion. Uh, he's the second Mexican player to do it. Um, the only other Mexican player to do it was Memo Ochoa when he was um, a couple, not a couple, a few years ago when he was with that Belgium club, which I don't remember uh, its name off the top of my head right now. But he's the second Mexican to do it. Um, I mean, overall, he's had a pretty decent season so far. He's played 19 out of the 34 matches that um, he that are available. Um, you know, this um, them winning the, winning this cup means that there's a possibility that they could go to Champions League. And, you know, with him being in the Champions League, can really help him uh, grow and experience another level of competition. Um, and if he does well in the Champions League and continues to do well with the Belgium club, um, I see him uh, being, a uh, you know, uh, a good piece for Gerardo Martino in the future and down the line. I mean, this guy's only 22 years old, so um, the future is bright for him. And um, congratulations, Arteaga, for the cup. Now let's head off to Spain where four Mexicans play over there. Um, so yeah, uh, let's start off with Diego Lainez and Andres Guardado. They had both started against Real Madrid, um, but they got taken out. Uh, they got taken out. Yes, they got taken out. Um, and Diego Lainez got taken out a minute 80 and Andres Guardado played 88 minutes, which was uh, pretty solid. I mean, they both look pretty solid against this Real Madrid team. They did end up drawing... Um, but God, man, I haven't seen Linus in a while, and holy shit, dude, he got buff. He used to be a twig when he got here, and now look at him. He's all like, he looks like a younger Adama Taure, obviously less, um, you know, bu uh, bulked up or whatever you want to say it. Um, and he did did a really good play against um, Casimiro, I think it was, and um, yeah, he 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 had some flashes of uh, you know, of, of brilliance. Um, Andes Guardado uh, also played, like I mentioned earlier, and he was also pretty solid. I mean, Andes Guardado has been really good for this Real Betis side at at, at, the, at his age, and you know that's I mean it's pretty good. And as for next week, um, next week they will be playing. Let me check. Or this week on Sunday they will be playing Real Valley. Validol, Validil, I don't know how to say it. Um, I'm pretty retarded. But yeah, um, Real Validid, um they have 50 points and are behind Real Sociedad for uh, Europa League spots. Uh, 53 points. Real Sociedad, 50 for Real Betis. Um, honestly, I, th I think this team can honestly push it and they can probably get into Europa League if they win a couple more games. I think there's only a few more games left in the La Liga season. But yeah, um, speaking about a few more games in the La Liga season, we have a Sorrio Hector Herrera um, playing for Atletico Madrid. And I mean, dude, this race for the La Liga is going to be insane. Uh, Atletico Madrid only lead Real Madrid by two points. And I think they also lead, and I think Barcelona is also right behind them. And so is Sevilla. So yeah, that La Liga race is going to be insane. Um, but let's get back to El Sorrio. Um, I mean, Sorrio has been having a, pr a pretty, you know, up and down season um he's been injured a lot which um you know doesn't really help him but um we've seen he uh he started this game that's the second consecutive game I f it, it seems like Cholo Simone is starting to trust him more um but I mean it's gonna be tough for Sorrio um if he does get to get to start uh these next couple of games because um, th I mean, they have a lot of pressure right now. They have a two-point lead over the other two teams, which uh, it, it's just crazy. But yeah, um, so you need that person to speed us, or else they're gonna, you know, they're not gonna win the league title. And it'll be pretty cool to see him win the title with I think Madrid. Moving on to um, Nestor Araujo. Nestor Araujo did come in as a sub for Celta Vigo at minute 82. Um, this team does not play for anything anymore. I mean, they're not out of. Um, 
Europa League um, completely. I don't think they can get relegated. And, well, yeah, um, yeah, he only played eight minutes. So, you know, I really don't have much to say. Um, yeah, uh, there's rumors that his um, contract talks aren't being talked about. So he might be leaving the club over the summer. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, but I read it somewhere. So, um, yeah, just be on the lookout for that about uh, Nestor Rajo leaving or staying with Celta de Vigo. Now let's go to the Ajax, um, where Edson Alvarez has secured the league title. And, um, yeah, I think yeah he's secured the league title. And, you know, he's just been doing it all. He scored a goal against... Um, he scored a goal during the week, which uh, saved them the draw, which uh, draw the match. Um, this week he was also pretty good. I think he played the whole entire match. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, um, yeah. So we're probably gonna have a new champion of the Edervisi, uh one being Lozano and ¿Cómo se llama ese güey? El uh, Principito Guardado. And now it's going to be Exxon Alvarez with Ajax, which will be the first Mexican to ever be champion with Ajax, which is uh, pretty exciting. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll be making a video about him uh, this week, hopefully. And, you know, because his story over the season has been really amazing to me. Now let's go to our last Mexican in Europe, which is Chucky Lozano in Italy. Chucky Lozano entered the game as a sub at minute... I don't know, but he entered as a sub. Uh, he came in. He was he played pretty cool. He had a pretty key. He he had some pretty good passes. Um, his teammates were kind of selling him sometimes, but um, you know they were already winning 2-0 against Torino. So you know nothing to stress there. Um, I mean, yeah, people. Um, the Italian press have been saying that Gattuso prefers um, como se llama ese güey, do the hands politano instead of um, Chucky Lozano because Chucky Lozano hasn't been up to the form that he was when he got injured i mean guys if he returns to that form and continues to play like that for the next for the next remaining remainder of the season and next season he's going to go to barcelona or some other big club in europe because i mean he was playing pretty darn good during those um during the start of the season and i mean it would be pretty good for him um and for that section we kind of um so yeah i mean that's that's all i have for you today um if you guys enjoyed the video, um, I'll be trying to be doing this uh, every single Monday or Tuesdays. Um, yeah, other than that, um, you know, I'll see you guys next time. And um, uh, don't worry about the gameplay. I know I'm kind of bad at FIFA, but it's, it's whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, take care, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys next time.